Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope you're all doing good today. And welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in and um, being here at Intuitive Angling where you're not gonna see any backward wearing hats, any flat brim hats, any yo, what y'all doing today type stuff. Um, you're just gonna get hardcore, crusty hogging information here. You know, low tech, no music, no bass boats running down the lake 70 miles an hour playing music, just a, just a fishing information that hopefully you can use to catch some more fish. So today we're going to sort of continue my, this whole deal I'm doing on secret bait modifications. And I don't know how many more I have to do. I've got a bunch of them. Um, some of them are a little bit more uh, profound than others. Uh, but again, they're just modifications. And that's one thing that is really important to remember is that everything that uh, you see in fishing as far as, you know, bait technology, baits and lures and that type of stuff, most everything is a modification of an existing idea. True innovation is super rare in the sport. I mean, super rare. If you look at it, I'm going to say probably in the last, probably in the last 30 years, the only true innovation as far as a lure category in the sport has been the Alabama rig. Everything else that you have, everything that has to do with hard baits, plastics, whatever, it's, it's basically some modification of an existing idea, which, you know, we're always out to look to how to build a better map mousetrap. And, and that's what today's is today when I'm talking about uh, my, my secret, my favorite uh, pre-spawn chatterbait trailers. So we're going to talk a little bit about chatterbait deal today. And, you know, there was a lot, a lot to talk about on chatterbaits. They're just an, an incredible lure category itself. They work all year long, but the time that I really like to use them is in the pre-spawn. And I've had a chance to fish them extensively, and I've sort of figured out two trailers that work better for me any other time than any other trailer during the pre-spawn when that water temperature is like upper 40s to around 60 degrees is when these things work really good. And the thing you want to remember about the chatterbait type baits, um, jackhammers, that type of stuff, is that bass get conditioned to certain sounds, profiles, and styles. And I'm going to say right now that most everybody out there that is fishing a bladed jig right now, they're using a jackhammer with that Yamamoto Zacco thing on it or that razor shad or whatever they use. But that's what they see. They see that Zacco all the time. They see that profile and the fish get conditioned to it. So I'm going to show you two different ones. It's going to give your chatter baits a different look that will really produce well in the pre-spawn. So let's get into it a little bit. First of all, let's talk about the bladed jig. Um, if you guys saw the video I did recently on the jackhammer versus the chatterbait, you know that I'm not a big fan of the, I mean, yeah, the jackhammer is a great bait, but for 16 bucks, it's just not worth it. So I'm going to talk today about the original chatterbait. If you guys want to go out and spend 17 bucks on a jackhammer, fine, but I'd rather use these $4.99 chatterbaits because I've, I've caught so many big hogs on these things. So many 20 pound bags that nobody can convince me that these things don't work just as good and they're $4.99. So that's what we're going to talk about today is the original chatterbait. First of all, the trailer. The, there's two different type of setups that I use uh, in the pre-spawn and there's basically three different type of chatterbait uh, looks that you want to give. You have a shad chatterbait that's trying to resemble shad. You have something that's trying to resemble a crawdad and something that tries to resemble a perch. But for the sake of the pre-spawn, like we're gonna talk right now, we're gonna talk about the two categories of the shad and the crawdad patterns. Because and the perch to me is more of a factor after the spawn and in the summertime. So I'm gonna show you guys my two favorite trailers when the fish are keen on shad and crawdads. So let's get into the shad pattern first. One of the things you have to remember about the pre-spawn time is this is the time of year that you want to use your biggest baits by far. Um, the big fish are shallow. There's a lot of gizzard shad and thread fin shad that are mature and they're really big. And the thing that I'm going to show you today, the tip is I'm going to show you guys sort of what I use to mimic a big gizzard shad. So uh, here's what I got here. The trailer that I use, and I, I'm going to say it's a secret because I don't know anyone else that uses them on a chatterbait, is the 5-inch Megabass Spark Shad. This is a big bait that's going to make your chatterbait turn into a big bass chatterbait, big gizzard shad. 
and I'm gonna show you guys how I like to set this up. First thing you need to remember on the spark shad, it's got a big flat wide back on it. I wanna knock some of this meat off of it because the main thing I'm concerned about is the length of the bait and the tail action for the chatter bait. So what I do is I'm gonna go take my scissors <coughs> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut right along that, see this sharp edge right here on it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut some of that off right there and I'm gonna sort of make it. And what this does, makes the bait a little bit more pro, a little bit more streamlined. It fits on the jig head of the chatter bait a little bit better. And um, sort of, and also it gives you more uh, hook bite. <clears throat> you don't have as much plastic to penetrate. So that's what it looks like after I take it off there. Once I get it on, I'll, I'll sort of get it up here. So here's my chatter bait. Another thing on the chatter baits is um, the amount of skirt layers that you use in the chatter bait is also going to affect your bulk and your fall. If you use two strands in it, you know, it's not going to be as bulky. It's going to fall quicker. This one right here, I've got three strands because I'm trying to create a big, slow, bulky profile. So uh, I'm going to trim it up. So first thing I do is I'm going to show you guys how to rig. Again, when, you, when you're putting these chatterbait trailers on, it's really important to come right through the center and get this thing perfectly centered in order to get that bait right. And another thing you have to do is make sure that you come in the correct distance before you come out with the hook, the hook point, because you want that bait to sit, you know, perfectly level on the, on the chatter bait. So here's my profile right here with it. Straighten up the skirt a little bit, and then I'm going to take and I'm going to trim off any, any excess stuff, rough it up a little bit. I come in and I cut about halfway up because I want some of these skirt layer strands to, to really sort of flare out a little bit. I don't want anything uniform looking. See how that one flared out there? That's what I'm looking for. So here's my secret pre-spawn shad pattern chatterbait setup. On there, a big bait, big bulky bait, thing you can cast a mile on there. This tail on the, the spark shad will really get a lot of action on it. And then you've got the bulk to resemble the gizzard shad. And the skirt colors, you know, I vary up the skirt color a lot. I just got white and chartreuse on here just for the uh, just video, not necessarily this is my favorite. A lot of times I'll use like a solid white, some type of a, more of a translucent shad. It's got a little bit of stain in the water or cloudy, windy days. I'll go with more chartreuse. But that's my uh, pre-spawn shad pattern chatterbait. It's a big bait, you know, compared to like the Zacco on there. Okay. Second one I'm going to show you is my crawfish, uh, uh, basically res resembling chatterbait. Thing about the crawfish patterns, um, and here again, I've got my, uh, you know, I'm going with the more of the green pumpkin and that type of th stuff. If I'm really wanting to match it, I'll pay close attention to the crawfish colors. I may tie a skirt that has some black, some brown, some green, some reds, but th I just got a peanut butter and jelly on for now, just for the sake here. The trailer I use for this is another one that a lot of people don't use is the Zoom Z-Craw. This Z-Craw, any time in the pre-spawn when I'm trying to resemble a crawfish, this is the bait that I'm wanting to put on here. And how I modify this is I keep it a full-size Z-Craw, but what I do is I come in and I take the, the ribs off the side. You don't really need these ribs on there. I mean, they're, they're really good when you're pitching and flipping this bait, but um, you know, for a chatter bait, um, it just sort of gets in the way of the hook a little bit. Doesn't really have anything to do with generating a strike. So I'll knock these uh, ribs off the side. <clears throat> Come in again. Like I said, most of the time I'll use, I don't have it tied up here, but I'll use like some type of black, brown, you know, red, maybe some orange in it. You know, it just depends on what the, what colors the crawfish are in the, in the lake that I'm fishing. Come through there with it. Now we've got that set up. Trim that back. You really want to make sure you don't have any skirt layers touching, you know, the legs moving on there. So there it is. That's my crawfish resembling. I've got the dark blade on it, the black blade. Uh, sometimes I'll paint them brown. Sometimes I'll paint them orange with fingernail polish is a good deal. But see, that's this is my crawfish resembling. So here's my two ones. 
they're in the pre-spawn when the fish are keen on those gizzard shad, the big gizzard shad. You know, I'm, I'm basically fishing this one when they're on crawfish. You know, I'm going with the uh, Z craw on it. Two different, completely different looks that will give it. A lot of times when I'm using the the shad one, it's like, if, especially if I'm fishing over grass, if I'm fishing over any type of milfoil, a hydrilla, that type of stuff. You know, I like the big gizzard shad looking one. Also, if I'm fishing around boat docks, if I'm throwing this thing around the pre-spawn, like around boat dock corners, boat dock sides. A lot of times, you know, the big gizzard chat will work real good. And if I'm fishing, you know, rocky banks, lay downs around stumps, that type of stuff, I'll go with the crawfish pattern a little bit more. So anyway, that's my two setups right there. The Z Craw, Zoom Z Craw, and the Mega Bass Spark Shad is a trailer on your uh, chatter baits. And um, chatter bait deals, like I said, it's a lot of it's personal preference, a lot of it's experimentation. The things that profile the things that the chatterbait trailers chatterbait trailers do for your chatterbait is they create different profiles. They have different amounts of drag that comes through the water, different type of water displacements uh, based upon the type of tail that it has. So a lot of this stuff depends on the water clarity you're fishing, the water depth that you're fishing the chatterbait, size of fish you're fishing, and what you're trying to duplicate as far as the, the, the forage goes for the fish. So there's a lot of different variables to determine the trailer on there. Um, but anyway, these are two that I found to be really effective during the pre-spawn. So we'll be back later on, you know, with, you know, some different tips on like where to fish these chatter baits and how to set up specific trailers, you know, for certain situations. And I do use the other stuff. I mean, I, I do use, you know, a dozen different type of chatter bait trailers. But I'm telling you guys right now, when you're fishing in the pre-spawn, like as soon as that water temperature gets around 50 degrees, give these two a try right here because they will produce some good ones for you, I promise. So anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. Appreciate it. Um, one more thing, tomorrow night, uh, Johnny and I have our live podcast on Fish the Moment Live. You guys might want to check in. They're going to be a good conversation. And um, thanks for tuning in again. Appreciate everything. We'll talk to you guys later. See you.